don't know. Must be a hip. So we're posted. Anyway, um, welcome everybody. It is Friday. It is week 14. What the fuck is SEO? And so we have with us, as always, from left to right, I would like to introduce Jason Brick. Hello. Tell us about yourself, Jason. I'm Jason Brick. I'm a professional freelance writer. Um, I'm involved in this because I found that being able to leverage the power of being able to string together two coherent words in written form gives you the key to the, exactly the lifestyle you want. And right. want to help other writers figure out how to do that too. Thank you. Oh, excellent. I'm John, and uh, I work with Bobby Joe on this show. Jason works with me on the SEO Wise program, which is what we're going to talk about here in a few minutes. And uh, so that's what we do. I do websites and SEO Wise, and you'll find out a lot more about that here in a second. I'm Kathleen Colvin, and I'm uh, one of the beta pioneers uh, for the SEO Wise program. Strongly endorse it, to say that off the top. And I'm a uh, author and writer of uh, historical fiction. Awesome. That's you, Bobby Joe. But you've already talked. You want to say more? I, I kind of already did, but but thank you. Um, hey, Walt, how are you? Tell us who you are and what you do. Hey, I'm Walt, and uh, I'm a sort of new to this SEO business. Um, retired from my day job, I call myself a recovering engineer and trying to be a scribbler. And I tried to got a, starting to develop a website, but if I can't get the website in front of people, it doesn't do me any good. So hence, I ran into John and Jason, and I am now part of the SEO Wise uh, student community, and I'm proud to be here. And thanks for having me. Welcome. Unity, I like that. So this week we um, we wanted to kind of just let you guys know that last week we had kind of a, a little bit of a failure. YouTube broadcasting was not hooking up to Google Hangouts last week during this, you know, 15-minute window that we wanted to start our Hangout. So we just said screw it, and uh, we're doing it this week. Um, we were going to uh, sort of touch on a few interesting things, but we're going to launch right into the SEO-wise um, beta program, and... I'm going to let John talk to you about what's new, what's different about it, and anything that we else that we need to know. Thanks, Bobby Joe. So we're going to talk about SEO-wise because we have Kathleen and Walt who are in the program right now, like right in the middle of the program. It's the most beautiful time to talk about it because we've done some changes. And this is, this is what's beautiful about the web and modern education. Jason and I have been working really hard on the program, and when we started working on this program, actually over a year ago, um, the goal was to really tailor it for writers and the writing community. And that's worked very well. And it, it would work well for anybody because as a business owner, entrepreneur, whatever you happen to be doing today for business, if you're trying to grow your business, you have to have good writing. Writing has always been the most important part of a web presence, the most important part of growing your business in the 21st century. If it's not quality writing, then it's it's hard to SEO op it's hard to optimize, it's hard to do anything else with it. And Google has been changing the words consistently over the years, the, the, the rules, I'm sorry, with their algorithm to make it more about co quality content and to be able to determine what content is quality and what's garbage. So the WISE program, while it was designed originally for writers, is really being opened up to all business uh, uh, owners, all business opportunities. Uh, we're taking on a group of realtors here in the next couple of weeks. I've got a different set of writers, different type. They're not authors. Whole different industry niche happening. I've got businesses coming up to me going, I'd like to run my sales staff through this program. So Jason and I started working on just changing the program so that the structure of what SEO Wise is is functional and modular for your industry niche. So we're customizing the program for real estate. We're customizing the program for sales staff. So at this point, we're, I mean, we, we didn't expect to be this far along, but it's gone so well, and the program works so well with the way it's de designed that we can now tailor it to whatever your business groups are. We've also managed to do something pretty incredible, which is 
we're, the price overhead we've actually cut down. Because of the way the system works, because of how well the WISE program works, our initial estimates of what we would have to charge to make this fly are coming down. So I think uh, we're, we're looking at an entirely different price point structure. We're looking at opening this up to all businesses. And we have so many great examples of what's happening that what I, what I want to do right now is talk to Walt and Kathleen. They've, they're in the middle of the program. They've got some questions that they're going to uh, uh, answer for us or ask us about the program. And then we'll just have a discussion about how it's going. And is that Elaine Lindsay that showed up there? It is. Hey, Elaine. So awesome to see you. Hi. Hey. Hi, Bobby Joe. Uh, Walt, Kathleen, and Jason. Hey, Elaine. Hello. Hi. So are we having that issue with no picture, or are you just no picturing us? It's 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 been an issue in all the Hangouts, regular and on-air. People are having issues with picture. Exactly. Oh, you can't see me? No. I, I can't. Can. You're not missing anything, sweetheart, okay? It's, it's <laughs> like furball hair today. That's quite all right. Whatever you want. Um, so great to have you, Elaine. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about what's going on with you. We've we been talking to you in, gosh, over a month, right? Jeez. Yeah. So I, that's great. We'll catch up with what you've been doing. I know you've been running around going to other hurls, right? A couple. A couple. couple. Excellent. So for right now, though, I think we'll start with um, Walt. You said you had some specific questions. Yeah. Uh, would it be better for this broadcast or for the 5 o'clock one? No, we can ask. I mean, okay. you know what? Let's, let's start with, why don't we start with this, you know, uh, where are you at in the WISE program and, you know, just honest, open. How, how are you feeling about it so far? Actually, pretty good. Um, I, I find the, uh, we call it the daily modules. Um, however you want to refer to them. They're nice small chunks and you get to go in and kind of get your feet wet. You have assignments you have to post and it's like uh, say if you're trying to do it on your own you read a book and it says you can do this but until you practice doing it and find out oh that didn't work then I we always have the option of doing the conference with uh, with you to get our problem solved and it's it's the incremental and they're big chunks. They're not, you know. So you have to put some effort in it from our point, from our our perspective. But I like the fact that you get to practice and build on what you're doing, and that is uh, old dog new tricks. You know, you got to go through the the motions and get my uh, what do you call it, muscle memory or finger memory, however you want to say it, working on some of these things. Right, right. Excellent. Good. Thank you for the feedback. So no problem. So, so hit me up with a couple questions. Okay, uh, communities and circles. I'm starting to think that a circle is something I generate and I control totally, but a community is a global circle where anybody can join. How's that for a definition? That's reasonably close. Hey, I'm happy for that. <laughs> that's that's better description than I've heard from others. So. You're absolutely right on circles. Your circles are yours. You create them. Um, uh, so whatever you, they're all they are for you is an organizational tool. Okay. They're whatever uh, uh, whatever is uh, uh, you create for your circles. And and here's how I use them. All right. At first, I was just adding people and dumping them into one bucket because I didn't know what to do with them. So I had a bucket called business, and I had a, a, I'm sorry, I'll call them circles. I call them buckets, whatever. Buckets. I had a circle called business. I had a circle called friends, and that was it. And I just moved people. They were either a business connect or they were not a business connect. Eventually, I created my tiers. So I have a circle called gods. I have a circle called peers, and I have a circle called students, right? That, that's just the, the three top-level generics. You can create secondary circles to represent different market niches, right? Uh, I'm sorry, Elaine, niche. Um, <laughs> I totally apologize for that. The American in me, forgive me. No, uh, that's more Canadian of you. To say, to, to to say apologize. niche? Watch, yeah, to apologize is very sorry for everything. Oh. <laughs> just America, it's niche. 
I apologize for nothing. All right, no. Um, <laughs> There's my gun. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait, wait till I. Wait till I tell you later, Jason, that I'm actually liking a country music star. I know that sounds horrible, but for, for, for me to like country music... Do you like music, music, or do you have a crush? Like high school like or adult like? Well, well if we have time in the show, we'll get into that. I'd like to actually... That'll be the ed, ed, the entertainment aspect, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I will say that this country music star did use the term man crush on network television, and he is a guy, so I will leave it at that. Who is he? I'm not going to say. He already said he's going <laughs> to. Sorry. All right, all right. So hang on. Hang on. How Canadian of you? <laughs> I'll get you for that. <laughs> no, you won't. You're Canadian. So, Walt and Kathleen. This no, is no, no. We never had any fun here, by the way, guys. Just so you know. No, no, no. All right. This is the perfect example of why it's web television, right? Okay. <laughs> Back to answering the question about circles and communities for Walt. So circles we create, they're ours. Nobody else sees our circles unless we share that circle. So a shared circle is something that other people can grab and add. And, and, and when they add them, they, you have the choice of adding that circle with its name or just taking all those people and putting them in an existing circle or creating a brand new circle with those people. Okay? Or cherry picking or picking just one. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so circle management is completely privatized to you. Right? Nobody else sees those. That's it. You, you organize them as you want. Communities are different. Whoever starts the community is in control of that community. They can add other users that can moderate or also help control. But communities basically have two choices. They're either public, which means I can see the community. I may not necessarily be allowed to join it, but I can see it, I can see the content, I can see what's happening, okay? or private. I don't see anything in that community. I know it's there, but I have to request an invite, but I can't see any of the content in that community. All right? And those are few and far between. I mean, you can create those, but unless you're really locking down some super secret stuff, there's really no advantage to having a super secret private community all right? for, for business growth. Um, if you're trying to monetize the content within the community, I suppose that's one way to do it, but you'd be better off monetizing the content on your WordPress site and using the community as a showcase of what you're doing. Right? So communities are private. You join a community wall, they let you in. The content's there as long as it's a publicly viewed community. Right? But communities have, grant special privileges. You, you, when you share something, you, you can't share it to a community and to everybody else. So th does, that, does that explain? I mean, there's a little more differences yeah. there, but does that kind of explain circles and communities? Yeah, i got a couple follow-up questions then. So uh, the moderator or those people who are assigned to help moderate, they, they would be the one taking care of trolls and inappropriate uh, posts and stuff like that. In general, they're supposed to be the ones, right? Okay. They're, they're the ones assigned to that. Now, if you are in a community and you come across somebody you think's being a troll or rude or whatever, you know, your your role really should be to plus mention a moderator and go, hey, or whatever. You know, uh, you could certainly, you know, tell them straight in the close, hey, you're being a jerk or whatever. But you know, usually the moderators are supposed to get involved and take care of that. You can also flag a post, comment, or or a post. There you go. Let them decide what to do with it. Okay, so then if I'm, just because there's a couple of communities that have to do with medieval history, and I haven't done anything with them, so I want to get involved. So, of course, I should probably post something appropriate. Of course, not well, not something like buy my book, but something like this is how you make gunpowder from scratch or something like that. But when I'm in that community, you're, you said that I can't... Uh, can I repost out of it, or I, can I only repost in it, or when I post to that community, it's only that community, and I can't have you said I can't send it to everyone in that community. You, Did I hear you right? Well, all great questions. So, so when you're in a community, remember that you think about the guidelines of a community. A community in general is supposed to be a place that discusses specific stuff. Yeah. When you go to share something out of a community, you'll get a note that says. 
remember, this was shared with a select group of people in a community. Be careful what you do with it. Okay. Okay. So you have to, you know, if the guidelines of the community say you can't share stuff out of this community, then you need to read those guidelines, right? Okay. Most communities, it's just an aggregate. So if it's the the cosplay community for science fiction, right? We go there, but a lot of people will share out of that community because it, it's not like this stuff has to stay there, right? Okay. I mean, you know, but you know where it originated. Like, oh, this cool picture came from that community. I want to go join that community, all right? So when you share, you can certainly share to the community and then do a separate post and share the same content to the public. Right? Okay, that would be more appropriate. Right? Yeah, you just can't share it to the community and the public at the same time because then Google says, why, you know, right? So um, you can share other communities. Here's my suggestion, though. All these communities that you found, yep. 80-20, spend the first 80% of your time commenting on other people's stuff, resharing it, okay? Then, then post something. Because I, I, you know, your gunpowder article is cool, but I would first, you know, you're walking into the bar, man. So walk in there, ask people who they are, find out more about them, right? Before you show them your your blog post, right? You'll have a much more receptive welcome that way. Got it. Then once you're accepted, so to speak, you can start throwing out your own content and growing your own responses to your content. Absolutely, that's right. You can do the plus however you want, really. Well, right, so. <laughs> but think so, about it like the last time you were in a bar, maybe you're on a, maybe you're on a business trip, maybe you're new in the neighborhood, you're sitting there at the bar, some folks are talking for the regulars. You don't just belly up to the bar and start talking to everybody. You listen to a few of the regulars and then eventually one of the regulars will say something that you know something about. Maybe he starts talking about hunting, plumbing, bitching about the government or whatever, and after an hour or so, then you get to tell your story or your joke and everybody's okay with it. It's the same thing, only it's a matter of days or weeks, but it's, yeah. it's the same rules you already know about being at a party or at a place where you're new. So this is the Jason Barr procedure? Yes, the Jason Barr procedure. Okay, it works for me. I think it works. I think it sounds good. It's Yeah, and when you do, when what what you're doing, right, so... Perfect, perfect analogy. If if I were if I were back in dating and I go to the bar and there's a woman on either side of me that I find interesting and I'm trying to get to know them, at some point I'm going to make a move to do more for them than what I've done. So buy them a drink, offer to buy them dinner, something like that. Usually the drink is the first step, right? Well, what does that correlate to? What are you offering in, in terms of your time and energy and plus? Is that a mention? Is that a reshare? Is that just a bunch of quality comments? But that's your drink. That's that's you offering first. And then eventually they will do for you. They'll buy you a drink. They'll buy you dinner. It's just that exchange that you're going for. Can I jump in there? Yeah, please. You can always jump in and you don't have to ask. Yeah. Well, I don't I hate jumping when somebody's still talking. Well, something that, that John said that that I don't think people realize just how important it is. That 80-20 rule, seriously, it's about listening, connecting, and engaging. Yes, it's yes. not like we all have stuff we want to get out there, but the fact is if you're going to jump into a community, take the time to get to know them before you start pelting them with all your stuff, whatever stuff that may be. Uh, saying hello and giving them a little lowdown on who and what you are when you come in is in most communities considered you know a great way to start off but seeing what's being talked about commenting and maybe finding a few folks to add to your circles is a really good way to start off in a community to really be part of that overall community That's yep. but <laughs> be polite in other words yeah, socially polite. Got it. Yeah. Some good comments. Thank you. You're welcome. And one other thing about the circles, um, like 
just anybody who's on here, it's it's a contact management system. Yeah, You've got it built in. You can use temporary circles. You can pop people people in and out based on timeline events. Like there are so many ways to use circles to manage all of your contacts. And not only that, any circle that has less than a hundred people, I just did this in a training. You can email them individually. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need anything else. Like it's awesome. It's very true. Well, this is a good point. You know, well, we, Martin Shervington has a lot of good videos about circles and communities and management. But I think mm -hmm. you you raise a bigger point. It's like let's let's do some clear discussion. Maybe I'll put together a presentation about basic management and that stuff. I like that idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have any well, other? Well, my questions? background is social, so it it crosses all platforms taking it from the actual engaging perspective. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. 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 So I'm looking at uh, Bobby Joe, are we wanting to keep more on track? How far off track are we? And she's gone. So, yep. uh, uh, Walt, do you have any other questions? Well, I had the one about uh, linking the uh, G Plus to WordPress, and we had spoken about it before, and you had some suggestions on that. Yes. Okay. So this is just uh, so just just so everybody understands, Walt and Kathleen again, they're in the Wise Beta program right now uh, uh, through the Willamette Writers Conference, and these are some of the questions that they have as part of their uh, as part of working the program. And uh, okay, that makes sense. Bobby Joe. Now I know. Yeah. So uh, so Walt's just got a couple questions. They're pretty good generic questions. I thought I would just yeah. address them here, but. Just so everybody knows, we have a hangout happening at 5 o'clock for the SEO Wise group, and we'll, this is where we have a group discussion and address all those questions. So, um, so what we will do, Walt asked about con connectivity. So this is with authorship, connecting your WordPress site to your Google Plus profile and making sure that you have authorship set up correctly. And the problem with this is that when Google first created it, they made it a little confusing, and then plugins came out to do it, and then Google created a couple different easier ways to do it, and now there's about 90 different ways to do it. And everybody is confused as hell as to what they should be doing because they confuse authorship and rel publisher and all these other things. So here's my definitive answer on this. There is a Google Gmail confirmation that you can do where Google will confirm that you own the website through your email address. You still need to go into Google Plus and list your website in the contributor section. Mm -hmm. My answer is to use the AuthorShore plugin, which takes care of all of this for you. You still have to go into Google Plus and list your website in the contributor section, but it takes care of everything else on the WordPress site the correct way. There's instructions. It gives you a little author bio box. It's the most beautiful, stupid, simple way to set up authorship, in my opinion, if you're comfortable working within WordPress. They need to have a more clear um, maybe page on how to verify your business page because I'm uh, mm -hmm. I have the Google Help page circle which used to be Google Plus Discuss and it was just people just took it over as always asking for help, always asking for help. So they changed the name to Google Plus Help. And the last two weeks now, that's been the main question from pretty much anybody that ever asks yeah. anything is why is why can't I get into my business page? I can't verify it, blah blah blah. So they need to have that to be a little bit more maybe simple to follow. So yeah, I agree. Yeah, right. no, you're absolutely correct, Bobby Joe. And I've, I've been dealing with this for the past two weeks with a variety of different clients who thought they were verifying because they have local pages and some don't. So they didn't understand what that verification process was just for a Google Plus business page. Basically the same deal. Okay, you own the site, take the little piece of code you need, get it put on your site, and you're basically good to go. You get your email verification and it's a done deal. Local's a little more involved. Well, and, we're, and now we're talking about business pages as opposed to human profile. Right? Yeah. Because that's another difference. Is that I was talking Sorry, about? I thought you said that. Sorry, Bobby Joe brought it up. <laughs> I thought you. I thought you were talking about business pages. No, I was talking about just authorship, just personal authorship for a writer between their WordPress website and their Google Plus profile. 
Well, that's okay. The whole discussion's off the agenda anyway, so we'll just go with it. Well, it's just, yeah, but you're right. Then it's a different process for a business page, so it is a little confusing there, and, and we'll we'll look at that another time as well. But that we'll, we'll set all that up as part of the program. I know you you've already got it started with WaltSocial.com, but um, we'll connect it through the the blog that we give you in SEO wise, and then we can work with you on your uh, site as well. Right. Thank you. Wh which plugin did you say you use? I like AuthorShore. AuthorShore. Okay. Yeah, Author S U R E, all one word. Okay, I don't know if that's the one I use. I'd have to look it up. I mean, you know, it's. I like the little box they give you. They give you an author bio box at the bottom where you can put in uh, social media links, and it's just kind of a nice all-in-one done setup. So I'm sure there are ten of those that that work as well. So you know. So Walt, to keep this moving along, any other uh, questions for this week? Uh, for this thing, I, I'm okay. I think I'm I'm real good. I got right. a couple minor things for the five o'clock, so that's good. Perfect. All right. Then how about Kathleen? Do you have any questions this week uh, regarding anything? Well, I don't um, because I am still sopping it in like a sponge. So um, no questions. But I just want to say that it's been an amazing experience being in the program. I didn't know anything. I did a website back in the old days in 1997 when they had you know little covered wagons and things like that. And um, I did an HTML, which was uh, fun, but but um, so I haven't done anything in oh gosh, that would be 15 years plus or minus. And uh, so I've been hanging back. And I want to just say that it's been uh, a fabulous learning experience. Yes, it takes some hard work, but what doesn't? Uh, big payoff if you roll up your sleeve. Awesome. Well, thank you. And yeah, I, well, you're like the superstar. <laughs> you all are cruising through this so fast. Um, I mean, you challenged me. This is what's been part of the whole change is that when I realized how easy it was to adjust based on where you guys were at, you know, I can create, at this point, we can do secondary sets. So, you know, if the extra credit homework isn't enough and you want more, I can stack onto that as well. You know. Well, if, John, I'm glad you mentioned it because I do want more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, and this is this is so we'll talk about that, Kathleen, because that's what's what Jason and I have worked out with the structure of the program is it's very easy to stack, it's very easy to scale. So, uh, ah, so excited, so glad, so glad. So, um, uh, if you have no questions. And we've kind of thank you for the endorsement of the Wise program, um, Bobby Joe. Where are we at? What do we got to do next? Is she gone? She's gone. I can't I'm have sorry. a no, 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 no. I've muted myself because I'm clicking and typing and doing all this stuff under the surface that you can't see with, with the show and right. answering questions and stuff. And I forgot I was muted because if I'm not muted, then it's like keeps going right. on. Um, no, I'm sitting here yapping, and then nobody can hear me. Uh, uh, so last week we had um, had the intention of talking just a little bit, a tiny bit about the Hummingbird update for Google, and then also, um, you know, the the whole um, you know the whole YouTube content ID is a big deal, I guess. But I don't really know what that means for the future. What it what they've done is they've basically taken the the fancy whatever it is that YouTube does that can identify copyrighted material and audio in your video. When you upload a song like you're at a party or something and there's some song playing, YouTube can identify mm -hmm. that song. And that, um, that technology that YouTube does to identify copyrighted material has, I guess, been made stronger and more like horribly, you know, able to do these things. And so there's been a lot of content providers on YouTube and channel owners and things like that that have been complaining that the new YouTube content identification system is really wacky. So that's an interesting thing to discuss if you guys want to discuss it. I'm still learning about what, what it all means, but that's, that's cool. something else that was in the news. But I think Hummingbird Update was a big deal in the whole SEOWise program, what's changed and what hasn't. But I know that you also addressed that at the head of the show, so if you wanted to mention something about it at the end, that'd be cool, too. Sure. All right. Thank you for that. So, <laughs> that's what Bobby Joe does. Keeps me on track stuff. Um, so, with the WISE program, 
Go to the site, seowise.co, register if you're interested. We're contacting everybody individually. Right now we're still in beta, but as I was saying, we've, we're able to customize the program to meet your needs, and it's we're having a blast. You've heard what Walt and Kathleen have had to say. We'll have other members of the Wise Beta program on next Friday. It's going well. If you're interested in kicking your business in the butt, figuring out how to use the modern web and grow your presence on Google+, this is what we do. It starts with learning how to write for the modern web, and that's what SEO Wise is all about. Moving into Hummingbird, and I'm hoping that once I make my little tiny two-sentence statement, Elaine will just say, uh-huh, and then we'll be done with Hummingbird. But Elaine may have other feelings about it. So I just wanted to know what it meant for SEO and, and content providers with the change. Exactly. So what humming here's here's my Elaine, you're gonna love this. This is my non-technical, I did no research. I read the 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 summary because if, if, if you and I have both been watching this evolve and grow over years, so I don't think it was really much of a surprise to most people in the no. SEO world. Um but I will be interested to hear whether you, how you feel about it. Uh, Hummingbird is basically the next evolution of the contextual web. All that means is that it was already in place in Knowledge Graph. We had seen it. They demoed it at I/O 2013. What am I talking about? The ability to have historical contextual search. So where I could say who is President Obama, and in my, and after they've delivered that information, the next question could be who's his wife, and I don't have to say who's President Obama's wife, I just say who's his wife, and the search engine gets the context because of my previous search. Right? That is contextual search, contextual historical search, it's semantic search, it's basically everything that we've been alluding and hinting about all these years with the, all the updates and everything, L LSI, it's here, people, it's here, it's done. It works, it's functional, it's out there. What does that mean? That means that SEO is still super important, absolutely still super important. This does not mean SEO is dead by any means. The signals and processes we still do as part of our jobs in terms of optimizing our presence for search still happens. The difference is the algorithm that Google uses to index your sites, your authority in social, your authority as an author, your website's authority as a publisher, the algorithm is now not the page rank algorithm, it is the hummingbird algorithm. So it's pieces of the original page rank and the evolution that have happened with a brand new reinvented engine that they're calling hummingbird that addresses everything in a much different way. So it's not like the panda update or the penguin update or the authorship update. This is a big new massive change that incorporates old stuff and a bunch of new stuff that they were already using in a smaller portion of their database. It's been functional for a month. Right? We've actually seen changes and fluctuations in sites because of it. Yeah. What it does is look at the conversation. So it's designed to look at conversational words, conversational speech, what we do in social, and be able to target or understand what we're looking at, what we're saying, what we're talking about, from conversational phrases. This is much more complex and much more accurate than simply keyword or key phrase based algorithmic uh, calculations that we had in PageRank. Right? So what does it mean for us? Nothing. It means we'll have better results. It means the ads we see will be even more targeted for us. Yeah. Um, it means that our writing still has to be badass, that SEO still has to be in place, and even more so, we're focusing on the conversation and the quality of that conversation. That's all it means. Elaine? Uh, I, I totally agree with pretty much everything you said, and, and that's really good. The, this is I came from a discussion of this today. That's actually where I was before I got back in the office. So the one thing is, rather than SEO, we've got to sort of broaden that image. It's web presence optimization. Now taking into account those social signals as well as your on page and your PR ring, all of that becomes this huge web presence. So it's not, 
you know, drilling down as far as SEO anymore. It's taking everything into account. And I think we're going to find that a lot of the smaller sites that had dynamite content that was relational to everything they did, they're going to find themselves going up in rank. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I, I think like kudos, kudos, because to me, and, and you and I have talked about it before, content is king. It is, and, and it's funny that you mentioned that because last week, or maybe it was the week before, I can't remember now, it was like a Friday afternoon, it was the week before, I was in a hangout with some um, content providers and writers, and a lot of them seem to be real, just hell-bent on thinking that SEO is like, oh, it's like all about what you say and manipulating the search engines and blah, 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 and like, no, it's pretty much just writing. And SEO has never been about manipulating search engines. Well, ever. yeah, for the black hat people it was, but they were always yeah. wrong. But all the people I was hanging out with think that, that everything that what mentions the word SEO is what uh, what black hat people do. Yeah, sure. No. Black hat, sure. Yeah, I'm just saying. You know, the, yeah. the, those of us who looked at it as you know understanding Google's guidelines and following them, you know, <laughs> never never looked at it as gaming the system. So, but yeah, you're absolutely right. So good, you know, I agree with everything you said, Elaine. So that's Hummingbird in a nutshell. What does it mean? It means just keep writing well and learn how to use SEO and Google+. Plus. It, it really does. Uh, we'll talk more about that uh, probably next week. But uh, I like that, web presence optimization. Thank you. Yes, there you go. I like that. That's a good term. I'm, I'm, and if anybody watching ever has questions about, like, what SEO is, if you don't know and you think that it basically means you know, trying to game a system of some sort or mm -hmm. spamming people on the internet, then I would love for you to ask your questions and or, you know, present us with any challenges that you see with SEO. Yeah. We're here to debunk myths about what it is. We're here to give it a good name because right now SEO is a dirty word and people don't understand why. They just think that it's bad so anybody attached to it is automatically bad. Yep, yeah. and it's so, so true. That was well put, Bobby Joe. Absolutely. People, I'm seeing. I, I am seeing just ever since I started helping John promote SEO and the show, and and like I said, I'm still learning. You know, I'm I'm, I'm really you know I know about on-page factors, and I know a little bit about what's what's bad and what's good. But that's about that's about all I know right now. And what I have been learning over the past, you know, few weeks is that um, anytime you see the word SEO in social media lately, if it's not positive, it's it's aligned with the word spammers or scammers or and it, it's really unfortunate because it's I think it's just sad. People don't take time to know something because there's negative stigma attached to it. Agreed. Agreed. All right, so that's Hummingbird and a little bit about SEO. What were the other topics we were supposed to bring up here? Well, we were gonna talk a little bit about business on the show going forward and trying to help promote some of the people out there who are doing Google Plus brands. Yes, we were. Yes, we were. So that's a little project that SEO Wise has gotten started. Um, SEO Wise is a brand, and brands in Google Plus were, you know, a few months back given more control, more ability to function like a human being. But we all know that brands <coughs> are groups of humans, right? Brands are the representation of a corporation. And with social media, brands have a voice, but they're not as trusted as a human being. Certainly not with authorship being what it is and the ability to do hangouts and talk to each other in real time. You know, the, the ability to grow a brand is much more difficult now than it was before. The value and power that we get out of a brand is really strong as well. So it, it may be harder to grow, but once you've grown it, you've got something very powerful that you can utilize for your business. So we've started a little program to reward or recognize brands in Google Plus that are really doing it right. They're they're uh, uh, posting from their uh, brand page. You know, they're they're open and transparent. And what I mean by that um, is there's not a wall between the brand and the human beings of the brand. Um, I I'll, I'll make a couple references. Uh, our own company, SEO Wise Portland Internet Design. I try to be very open and honest about. Um, no, Elaine, we still can't. <laughs> I can't anyway. Uh, 
try to make. I, I don't see you or Bobby Joe. They're just logos. Uh, we we try to make SEO wise. If you don't know who is behind the brand, then we haven't done our job. I mean, we have Alex, uh, Ricky Gonzalez. We have Bobby Joe. We have myself. We've got Zach Palm who just joined the team. We have Blythe, uh, Ain who's writing for us on PID. I mean, we've, it's a it's a group of people, and we all together represent Wise brand as well as ourselves. And I think that's what a modern brand is. A modern brand is a logo that has a community of people that all support it, right? And that's power. That's a modern brand that's much more powerful. And I'll give you an example. Um, S, or I'm, I was about to call them SEO moz. That it, just back to your point about SEO being a dirty word, uh, Bobby Joe, uh, they took SEO out of moz.org, I think probably for that reason. Yeah. That they wanted to separate themselves from SEO. Um, uh, look at look at uh, uh, Verante. Uh, 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 Mark uh, Traphagen's title is director of digital outreach. Right? I mean, he, he could just call himself an SEO guy because really a lot of what he talks about is simply the SEO process right. applied to things. But it makes more sense to move to evolve beyond that term, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So. Uh, uh -huh. Nice. That's very cute. I tend to wax on. No way. I'm not long-winded. Yeah. Wax on, wax off. <laughs> no, uh -huh. I just didn't. I didn't want them to think they had to sit here and be polite and be quiet. You guys can literally jump in any time. <laughs> I don't think anybody no in this room could be offended by you interrupting. I know I never do. I try not to. No. <laughs> no, that's very true. Uh, okay, so brands. Uh, we were talking about brands. Anyway, that's. I was talking about Moz. I knew Moz as a brand. Yeah, me too. Then I discovered Rand Fishkin. And and I he made it very clear that he was his own human being and did his own thing, but he was representing Moz. Then I was introduced to Dr. Pete. But Moz does a really good job of letting us know who's behind that brand. Here are all the people, they're open and honest, you can talk to them directly, or they will sometimes represent the brand. And that's what we all have to do. And what Google Plus has done, which I think is brilliant, is give us a place where we can be both. Here's me representing me. Here's my brand page representing my brand. They're both tied together as long as we're utilizing them in a great way. Our job, our, our, our promotion that we're doing with SEO Wise was to find other brands in Google Plus that were really bringing it. They're posting on a regular basis. They're sharing an, an useful content, engaging content. It's not just trying to hard sell their products like a lot of brands are doing. Uh, fun stuff, and so we're trying to, we, we need a list. If you guys are out there in the plus world, um, a lot of times Google Plusers will end up in a little bubble of their own existence and not really know what's going on outside of it. Uh, please send us the brands. We want to know who is really rocking it on Google Plus. They can be giant, they can be tiny, can be a one-man personal brand, corporate brand of two people, I don't care. But we I think the ones that came up, um, the ones that came up on a reshare of that post were Ford Motor Company, T-Mobile. Um, I believe the other one was. I'm trying to think now. True They're, Social and Business Banter Press aren't bad. Huh? What? Sorry. <laughs> I said True Social and Business Banter Plus aren't bad. I okay. just thought it was interesting to see these big brands being mentioned by people who are just regular folks on the internet saying these people engage with us. Excellent. Ford uh -huh. is notorious for answering every question they can and Scott Monty who runs it answers a ton of them himself. Yeah, I wow. think that was the one. That was the guy. Yeah, he's he's phenomenal. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um and th this is what this is what I we love to see because this is a different way for brands to interact. It hasn't been that way in the past. No. I mean, I certainly never saw a brand engagement like this on Facebook. And maybe there is to some extent through Twitter exchange, but I mean, nothing like we could be doing here. And, and the reason I'm excited is because that's the first step, right? We get brands to be to, to engage this way. The next step is Hangouts. Okay? When, when we can, as a consumer, have a conversation with that brand and say, look, this is what I'm bothered, this is, this is what bothers me, this is what doesn't bother me. I mean, this, this, this openness is what's transforming business, and it's all happening through the Google platform. And I know I sound like a ridiculous fanboy, but I've watched it transform my business, 
and I'm watching it transform others. So uh, the, the branding aspect uh, what, with what we're trying to do and bring in these companies uh, and re reward them, I'm not going to say what we're doing to reward them yet. I want to get the list. We've got several things that we're planning as promotions and, and some very cool things happening. Right now, I just need to get the list. And as soon as we have the list, we'll tell you what we're going to do with it. So I need about 10 more brands, everybody. 10 more. Yeah, what and, if talk about? and if you're watching the broadcast or you watch this later and you are a brand or you have a brand and you want to join us for a hangout, then let us know and we'll be in touch. Thank you. I forgot to say that, Bobby Joe. Yes, this show, we're adjusting the format, and we want to highlight a business or an entrepreneur every week. So if you're interested in some airtime to talk about who you are, what you do, what you know about SEO, and ask us questions and promote your business, hit us up. Hit Bobby Joe up. Talk to us in Google+. Uh, let us know. Uh, the show is every Friday at 1.30, and we'll, anybody and everybody, it's an open format. 1.30 Pacific, 3.30 Central. Thank you, thank you. What else we got to go over? It's not raining today. <laughs> it's raining here. Is it? I mean, I wish it would now that I'm back and I've ran all my errands and whatnot. All right, so it's not raining where you are, Bobby Joe. It's not raining in Oregon. It's nice and sunny, although brisk. And Elaine, where are you at? And it's not raining? Ottawa. It is raining. Oh, well, it is it raining. It was raining, yeah. All right. All right. I like this. We'll just check the weather in the hangout. <laughs> <laughs> I know the rest of you are all in Portland or yes. somewhere in Oregon. There's nothing wrong with that. No, no. You just you're on the other side of the continent. Yeah. Compared yeah. to her, when she's you know she's pretty amazing. She's, Next. she's Amer She's in America's hat, you know, and I'm just below <laughs> America's hat. Compared to the suburb of New York, right? What is that, Jason? What in New York? Wasn't funny enough to repeat. Oh. <laughs> hey, Elaine. I'm in St. Paul, Minnesota, where, you know, if it's not, you know, if it's not January through uh, May, it's not snowing, so that's good. <laughs> uh, Elaine, what have you been doing lately? You've been gone. Where you been? Uh, I know, right? I'm going to beat your butt. Sorry, hon. I was in Calgary um, visiting with my newest glam son. Because I'm a glamma, you know. And oh I live in Dallas <laughs> uh, with the E Woman Conference for six days. Nice. And then I spoke at E Woman here. And um, yeah, it's just been, and, well, in the middle of all that, we had huh, a very sad time. I've lost two of my fur kids. Oh, sorry to hear. Yeah, to just one. So yeah, it's uh, been a tough month. I'm very sorry to hear. Thanks. Uh, had that stuff going on. Sounds like you've been traveling very, around. Yeah, but very excited to um, be seeing the help outs now going forward with Google Plus, and there's just so much coming down the pike that everybody's going to see. That's that's just to me. Every time you turn around, there's something brand new and wonderful, and uh, I I just think it's awesome. It, it is. There are some new things that are really good, but there is also a lot of stuff they need to just fix before moving on to new things. <laughs> yes, yes. Some things in the Hangouts Here's are, are a tad off. Hangouts, yeah, Hangouts are weird. I'm sorry. We just had a, a little overlap there. Um, hangouts are weird compared to what they were, and the yeah. user interface on desktop and some mobile is just, people are just not happy. And, you know, yeah. and free product and you know you just kind of roll with the punches but you know we'll, we'll see what happens hopefully they can settle into some stability here soon and just you know people people have a hard enough time learning the service and then you go and change everything on them and it can be really debilitating and people just will leave because they can't figure out how to use it and they're tired of trying to figure it out and and then until they just re you know relax and just okay everything's ironed out let's keep this user interface for a while because this is working for us. That's just my two cents. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but across all platforms you're seeing this. Not 
you're not seeing quite as much on some of the other platforms because Google in itself, you, know, you people have heard me say this before, it's such a behemoth. There, there are so many parts that integrate and integrate in most cases well. There's a lot more happening behind the scenes that we really aren't seeing because this is just a minuscule part of that that gigantic beast. Oh, of course. But yeah. it does all work together. And, yeah. and that's, I think, Bobby Joe, what makes it really frustrating. When we spend as much time as we do in, in Hangouts, it does make it difficult when, when you're having problems. I did hang out a bit, I will say, from Calgary and Dallas, but um, it was much earlier in the day. Sorry. And, and yes, you can slap me for. I think that you women. I think the eWomen Network should send you a check because it seems like every time we talk to you, you've been to a concert and you're advertising for them. I Actually, you know what? I, I think I, I will send them a copy of, of this um, Hangout. The one last thing I will say, and, and this is something neither one of you knew about, but uh, I did my very first motivational speak Ooh, so, really? two weeks ago tomorrow. And I'm very excited and happy to say I got a standing ovation. Sweet! Wow, yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of taking off in, in a secondary direction, uh, something I should have been doing for a very long time and didn't. So, hey, we I'll all be wearing two hats. What's we that? Are, we all get our callings at weird times in our lives. I can't <laughs> motivate a cat out of a paper bag. But I'm very glad to hear that you've been able to find people to get into that sort of thing, and, and I bet you're great at it. Well, it was really weird. I sort of put it out to the universe that, you know what, if I don't do it this year, I'm never going to do it. And I turned around literally 48 hours later. I got a call from a doctor who wanted to speak with me, and she said, this was back in March, said, um, we want you to be a keynote speaker. I know your story. I know some of it. You know, tell me more. I want you to speak in September. And that's what happened. It was terrifying. Not bad, lady. Awesome. Not bad. Thanks. That is, uh, that is awesome. I mean, congratulations. You are, Thank you. you. That, that is so cool. Um, do, do you, let me ask you this about speaking, Lane. Do you do you enjoy it? Do you find do you get nervous, or does it give you a rush? Uh, I love to. Sp I mean, I've been speaking for business now for three years. I absolutely love it. But yes, I get nervous every single time. Okay, it never. So I think if you don't get nervous, it's not for you. Exactly. Exactly. Somebody, somebody on stage said that once. A comedian or a performer of some sort said something. You don't feel that. Stage fright or those butterflies. Oh just yeah, because the rush comes yeah. after. Yeah. But that yeah. stage fright is, is what you know gets you involved. It was just such a. It was so weird to be sort of on the this other side where I wasn't talking about you know I know my stuff, John. You know we we live and breathe SEO and and Google Plus and I live and breathe social and so I know all of that and and it was actually a little hats off to Jane Allen here in Google Plus who mm -hmm. helped me tighten up the last piece of my speak and where I was starting it and it was it was really weird because it because it was so true she said it's your story beautiful who would know it better than you beautiful absolutely true yeah well congrats and see Perfect. Google Google Plus comes through again Woo. <laughs> <laughs> so, so did you did you uh, when you say Google Plus comes through did you land the gig through Google Plus no um, why I say that okay because Bobby Bobby Joe knows a little bit more about me because we've done a hurl together and um, Google Plus and Hangouts specifically gave me the confidence to not hide things anymore. Um, you, nobody here knows, but uh, I'm sort of physically challenged. Um, I was crushed between three cars when I was 20 and really? lost a big hunk of my leg. Um, there are some other challenges that came along with and after that, which caused me to be challenged not just by motility, but char challenged by, or sorry, and mobility by um, chunks of my life were spent lying in bed. 
-hmm. So you you leave you lose whole pieces of of time. I got to study up a lot and I got to read a lot and that was all really great, but it leaves big holes in your resume <laughs> when you're basically a veggie for you know five seven years at a time. Okay. And it does really sap your confidence. So it became, Hangouts for me became a way to realize that the, you know, the, as I sometimes say, meat suit is really irrelevant wow. if you have a good message. Nice. That was that's very good. crass, I know, but. <laughs> no, I get, I mean, that's cool. I mean, I, I like the, the, the bluntness, and, and uh, I had no idea. That's awesome. I mean, you know, true, it's like want to do another show segment called True Stories of Google Plus Hangouts or something. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, cool. Very cool. And I, I'm just going to say, this is, Bobby Joe, this is like yet another show that went down with awesome content and well. Um, okay. So, you know, this was cool. It's a, it's a, this, is, this show for us is a work in progress. And any feedback we can get from anybody on whether it was awesome or whether it sucked or what we could do to make it better, we'd love to have because the, the benefit of being able to do web TV is that we can adjust it and correct. You have direct access to us. It's not a network. Yeah, right? and, and every, anybody on this panel is, you know, the more the merrier. I mean, we're used to having three people, four people, so... If you ever want to jump in and say something, say something, and we'll invite you. Yes. You know, there's, there's no, like, boundary here. I mean, unless you're going to come in here and do something utterly ridiculous, which, in which case, I would lighten things up sometimes. <laughs> um, no, we're always, we're always looking to have anybody. I'm jump sorry in. to derail you and take you off in a totally different I, direction. I love derailment. It's oh good, good. <laughs> the spice good. of life. All right, so here's what I want to do, Bobby Joe. I want to recap. Hummingbird means nothing. It's awesome. Just deal with it. Yeah. Uh, SEO Wise program is open for everybody and anything at this point because it's going so well. And if you want to know more about it, go to seowise.co or find the community in Google+. You request an invite. Everybody's welcome. You can see what people are doing in there. Talk to the actual participants of the program and contact us when you're ready to do it yourself. Uh, Elaine Lindsay is back with us and kicking ass and did her first public speak and had a ball and got a standing ovation, and we all need to commend her on that. And uh, what, what am I missing? What else? You got a couple of great students. I have badass yeah. students. Walt Sosa and Kathleen Colvin are in here from the SEO Wise program. If you missed what they had to say, go back and watch it earlier, but they'll tell you how awesome it is and how they incredible they are. They also gold stars on their report cards, I think. Excellent. <laughs> yes, showing up here and pimping the program it is extra credit. You will have more gold stars. So. No, I just thought I would learn more, and I appreciate being invited. Awesome. Glad. Well, did you? I hope you learned something. <laughs> I did. Yeah, sure. thanks, for, thanks for putting up with it. <laughs> All right, Bobby Joe, take us out. All right, you guys have a great weekend. We'll see you next Friday.